Hello and welcome. I'm Annette Reader from the biblicalnutritionist.com. And today it's all about what are the top five foods that you need to be dehydrating. And I'm gonna talk about, yes, how to use a dehydrator, but what if you don't? We're gonna talk about that as well. Now these top five foods, okay, I just gotta tell you, number five is gonna blow your mind. It is so exciting, I can't wait to get to number five. So these five foods are going to help you save money. And today we all need to be saving money on our groceries somewhere. And so I'm gonna give you some tips on doing that. And also each one of these five foods is gonna help you to feed your family well. And we need to recognize that we're in charge of our family's health and we can take charge by adding in dehydrating into all of the skills that you have in the kitchen. Well, it is always my joy and honor to serve you God's recipe for excellent health. And that includes being confident in the kitchen, which we're gonna to cover today, confident with your health, we're gonna talk about it, and confident in understanding how much God loves you. And because he loves you so much, <laughs> the number five is so gonna tickle your fancy. I know it did me, and I can't wait to get there. Well, thanks for letting me share this with you and welcome to my kitchen. Let's go through the top five. Number one is what's on sale at the grocery store. Now you're saying, Annette, that's not a food. Well, it is because we need to learn to shop smart. So what's on sale at the grocery store? Is it peaches? What's in season? What's going out of season? What are they getting rid of? What are they bringing in? Look for those special buys. Now here's the number one tip to finding those special buys before you step into the grocery store, before the doors open, however they open, you just say, Lord, take me where you're gonna show me the best deals. And he knows what your budget is. He knows how he wants to bless you. So take him with you to the grocery store. Number one is what's on sale. When you find some produce or any type of regular food, so fruits, vegetables, beans, uh, legumes, herbs, whatever, when you find them on sale, buy multiples, <laughs> buy in bulk, and then bring home and start dehydrating what you know you can't eat in the next four to five days. That's number one. Number two, what's getting ready to go bad? Many times when my husband's making his smoothie right over here with our, our Vitamix blender, he'll, he'll get the clamshell of greens that I have in the refrigerator, uh, unless I have our own greens from the garden, which hasn't been that great this year. And so he'll open it up. This is a new one I just bought, but he'll open it up and he'll say, does that smell bad to you? Now, you know, if you have to ask, does that smell bad to you? It's probably going bad. So it's like, yeah, don't, 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 don't eat that. And so what I'll go through and just pull out the good leaves and then separate the bad from the good, because usually it's just a few bad leaves that are making the whole clamshell to smell bad. And then I'll go ahead and rinse them off really good, wash them and then dehydrate them. So that's number two, what's getting ready to go bad? Now the dehydrator that I really love to use is the London Sunshine. I've gone through a couple different brands and sometimes either a company can't keep up with the supply or after COVID they just, they couldn't make the good uh, dehydrators anymore. So I have fallen in love with the London Sunshine. It is, it comes in different sizes. So if you are a small cook, you can get the small one like I have here. If you like the big commercial one that I did another dehydrating video on, that's an amazing machine. It's going to come with your stainless steel trays. And this is really important. You do not want plastic trays. I had that in the past and they started breaking on me. I'm like, oh, that's not good. And it also comes with, a, now these, this has a really fine interwoven um, tray here, but it also comes with an even more fine that you could put on there to stop things from going through. And then if you're gonna be making some leathers or some tomato so diet dried tomato sauce, then you would use these liners here. And I like stainless steel a lot because it can be sterilized. It's not gonna be a plastic. I don't have to worry about VPA and it's just safe. And this company delivers. So I'll put a link to it down below and you can check it out for yourself and see which one fits your budget or your family size. But I always love knowing that my dehydrator's running because that means I am storing food. Now, if you always have your dehydrator set up, I don't always have it in the kitchen. Sometimes I have it in actually the garage because especially if you're gonna do onions, you definitely want it in the garage. 
So I will put my dehydrator in the garage and that way I can just bring the trays in, fill them up, go put them out there in the dehydrator in the garage and just turn it on and it will just run on its own. I don't need to smell it, I don't need to hear it, which you really can't hear it. So anytime something's getting ready to go bad, I just throw it in the dehydrator. I can do a lot more with it later when it's dry than I can when it's bad. When it's bad, it just gets thrown out. So number two is what's getting ready to go bad. Number three is what are you growing? Now I know many of you say, well, I don't have a garden. Well, herbs can be grown anywhere on the windowsill, in your window, in your front yard, in a pot, in a planter, in your garden. So I wish you could smell this. It smells so good. I just cut these. So I've got some rosemary, so I've got some mint, I've got some oregano, and I've got some thyme. And oh, actually some lemon balm too. So I just kind of went around the yard and clipped off, you know, several of my herbs that I have. Most of the, well, my cilantro is, um, didn't have enough to cut because we just had that for dinner last night. But sometimes it will winter over and I'll get two or three years out of it as long as we don't have a super strong freeze. And so, yes, I can cut my rosemary through the middle of the winter or I can just go ahead and start dehydrating it now. And so I can always have my dehydrator going and using these herbs in the dehydrator so that I always have mint to put in my tea or if you like to make ice cream. We like to make ice cream on the holidays, usually once or twice a year. So, so many of our family members love mint, chocolate mint. So I will put the mint in instead of using like a peppermint oil, I just use my mint leaves. And so just putting these in your tea, putting these in any of your drinks, you can use mint in your salad dressings. It's incredible. You know, any of these herbs. So if I do that, I don't ever have to pay the really high price for herbs and spices in the grocery store because I'm always keeping a fresh supply in my own pantry. And I usually dehydrate more than I can use, but the oregano, oh, that is so good. Just have your own fresh oregano in your own in spaghetti. So even if you buy the cheap organic spaghetti sauce at the different stores, adding in your own rosemary and your own oregano will totally spice it up and people will never know that you bought it, that sauce. They'll, thought, they'll think you made it. So things that you're growing. Number four is what do you use for seasoning in an, on, an everyday, on an everyday occurrence? Now, I always use onions. So I can go to Sam's or Costco and buy powdered onion right here in this jar. Or I can buy this, use it up, but once I've used it up, I save the jar. This is actually my own powdered onions in here. And then I have another jar here that I've used, and this is my green onions that I dehydrated and kind of just chopped up. And so I just used the same jar that I've already emptied from before. And I love these jars, they're the perfect size. And so when you're at the grocery store, buy extra onions. Buy them now because prices keep seeming to go up. So buy now, dehydrate as much as you can, and then put it in some tightly sealed jars. When we get into a real financial crunch, um, I don't know what the future holds. And I don't want to pretend that I can tell the future. But yet, if I'm cooking under a crisis moment like food prices have just escalated or there is no food, if I've dehydrated my spices, even if I'm just making beans for dinner, then I can add the spices and my family will think, oh, we're not suffering. We're doing actually really well. So onions, garlic, green peppers. This is what you want to be dehydrating all of the time. And all of these can grow in your yard. If it's fall where you're watching, when you're watching this, plant some garlic anywhere. Anywhere you have a, just a square foot of ground, if you have this much ground in your yard, you have enough to harvest an incredible amount of, of uh, garlic. So plant it in the fall. It's like your tulips and things like that you plant in the fall and grow your own garlic. Green peppers can be grown pretty much from spring through fall. So grow those as much as you can. If you know someone who has a farm and they're tired of harvesting their peppers, just say, hey, um, I'd be happy to help clean up your garden for you. And typically they'll say, yeah, go right ahead and take whatever you want. And you'll come home with a box full of peppers. I know it because I've done it. And so be willing though to, you know, be very grateful for what they offer you. All right, so number four is you need your seasonings. No matter what happens in the future, if you have dehydrated your seasonings, you can always be the most fabulous cook and no one will think they're being deprived. Now, when you have your own vegetables, make sure you've got a really good knife. It's the Nakano knife, N-A-K-A-N-O, and this chops up 
beautifully. So you always want really good sharp knives. You want a good cutting board. And so you need these tools. Even if we go into a crisis time in our world, if you've got the basic tools, which is a cutting board and a really good knife, then you will always be able to cook for your family wonderful meals. Now that's four. Number five, I'm laughing because this is just so adorable. All right, and I forgot to say, when I do my onions, I use my food processor. And this is my food processor and I just, it's usually, so I got my immersion blender that I show all of the time on my videos for my soups and stuff like that and sauces, but you just put that on the top and you've got, voila, instant food processor. And I've gone through many of these, um, buying them from different companies, and now I'm just like, I'm not gonna buy anymore. I am only going to use the Vitamix brand because I'm tired of the other ones that keep breaking. So I could have bought this one in the first place and saved myself a lot of money. And again, if we go into a crisis mode with our food, you need the tools necessary to make good meals. Now, number five is a bouquet of flowers. Okay, there's more to it than just a bouquet of flowers. Not that it just doesn't look beautiful, and it does, doesn't it? I just actually just cut these out of my yard just a few minutes ago. I have been dehydrating rose petals. Now, the days of potpourri, those days are gone. We're now into eating everything. And so these are just rose petals that I dehydrated straight from my yard. I gathered them up put them in the basket, I brought them in, I washed them, I didn't want any bugs, and I dehydrated them. Here's why I want you to do this, because I want you to learn how to make rose water. When we dehydrate rose petals, we can make rose water, and rose water has incredible health benefits. Put it in the comments down below, how many of you have said, yes, I use rose water all of the time? Or yes, I use rose water in my dishes or for as my astringent for my face or my toner. I just so wanna say good for you because I've known about it and I became familiar with it because so many of the cookbooks that I'm looking into are, are have a, a Jewish heritage to them. And I'm like, rose water, rose water, everyone's talking about rose water. Why are they talking about rose water? So I really had to figure out, okay, what's up with this? And so I started doing some research if you have anyone in your family who's dealing with any type of skin issue, a rash or rosacea or acne, you need to learn how to make rose water. People who have digestion issues, if they have stomach disorders or they just, and this is like <laughs> even a good cleanse, but it's really good as an antioxidant. It has so many healing properties. And of course that makes sense because it's, a, it's something God gave us and it can add just a spritz of flavor. It can go savory or sweet. So if you're using cumin or cinnamon, you can add rose water. So I'm gonna tell you real quickly how to make your own rose water. Don't forget to put in the comments if you've already experienced rose water. So what we wanna do is we wanna go ahead and take the rose petals, we wanna wash them, and you can use fresh rose petals or you can use dehydrated. The purpose of teaching you to dehydrate them is so that you can have rose water all winter long when your roses have, are, are done. And so I want you to dehydrate as many rose petals as possible. Now, if you're like me, you're gonna say, but I like the beauty. I know, I struggled with that too. But for the purpose of this video, I just gave in and like, I'm just so gonna do this. And now I realize, oh, I'm gonna do this all the time. And then it's in the late spring, I get my roses are so full that I won't even notice if I've taken off half the flowers. So dehydrate your rose petals so that you can store the dried rose petals in a tightly sealed jar and make the jar, you know, so if I was using a jar like this, I would want to fill it up three fourths of the way. I don't want much oxy oxygen space. So fill up the jar and then, or use a smaller jar. So you want one fourth cup of dried rose petals and add that to four cups of water. We're gonna put that on the stove. We're going to bring that to a light simmer. We're gonna put a lid on it and let it simmer on a really low temperature for 30 to 45 minutes. 
Typically what happens is you're going to lose the color of the leaves. That means we have pulled those essential oils out. We have gained all of the nutrition in the water. Once you have done that, you're going to strain it. We're done with the rose leaves. And then that is your rose water. Let it come back to just room temperature. And then you can put it in a spritz bottle. And you can put this in the bathroom and just spritz your face as a toner. If you have a sunburn, you want to spritz the, the sunburn. If you have a rash, you have a bug bite, you want to spritz that. Because it has an ability to, enter, to be a free radical prevention, so it's going to interrupt whatever's going on on the skin. Rosacea, acne, rash, all of that. Redness, eczema, you want to use rose water. Not only that, but you could use one teaspoon of rose water, that's all you need, and add it to some stew or some lamb stew or some lentil soup or to your salad dressings or your cupcakes or your icing anything and you're going to get incredible health benefits so i hope you go and try making some rose water and let me know how your family likes it or maybe you're not going to tell them <laughs> sometimes i do not tell them exactly what i'm doing i just want them to experience it first and then after the reaction then i'll then most of the time i tell them <laughs> so yeah so i want to see how you deal with the rose petals i told you number five was going to be so much fun and guess what it's free now there's a key to this make sure the roses have not been sprayed with any pesticides we do not want to be simmering some pesticides but if you grow them in your yard like i do they no pesticides are ever by them and so just enjoy them store up store them up for the winter to enjoy rose water all year all winter long and i can't wait to read your comments so these are the top five foods yes this is now a food that I want you to enjoy. Number one, I want you to be able to save money with your budget, and we all need that help. And number two, nourish this body that God has given you and have fun doing it. All right, it's been my joy to share with you today God's recipe for excellent health. Thanks for watching, and I can't wait to read your comments about this. And remember, God loves you. And that love is demonstrated in even the, the roses that he's given us to enjoy, both the beauty and the, the bees that get to come along with them, but also now the rose water. And you're going to find it in all of your Mediterranean cookbooks, especially if you have Jewish cooks, cookbooks. You'll see the rose water there. So I'm looking to you for beautiful skin, a healthy digestive system, and an amazing amen day. Thanks for watching.